welcome to devlog number two. My name is Jason, game designer and environment artist on Hunters Uprising. Today we have quite a few updates and new mechanics for you as we move closer to our first prototype build. Some of the mechanics are much larger in scale than others, and of course as always, anything you see here is very much work in progress and subject to change as we progress. To start off with, Rabbit has been busy adding more detail to the mall location, utilizing the surrounding car park for military outposts, watchtowers and car wrecks with potential loot locations for any daring monster hunters, as well as several new stores inside the mall itself. But we won't show you too much just yet, you'll want to explore them yourselves. Meanwhile, I have been busy implementing our previously mentioned sewer system we spoke about beneath the residential area and leading to several nearby points of interest. But be careful, it won't only be enemies from our world lurking in the dark. And speaking of creatures, our early prototype for zombies are in using a heavily modified version of Smart AI. They lumber about, they will spot you and they will chase and attack you if you're too close. We have a long way to go to make something more suitable to our vision, like proper roaming hordes and different folklore based creatures in general that pack a punch, as we want our game to not only be hardcore in regards to first person only and HUD elements, but hunters will also become the hunted at night by certain creatures. But that is for a future devlog. One mechanic we have heard so much about over the years in the survival genre is player tracking. You hit a player and they run into a building or into the woods, track them with our first iteration of blood drops and the ability to track a player for a short amount of time via the bloody footsteps that they're leaving behind. This will also work if you've walked through the blood of a downed NPC or AI. For me personally, this is something that goes all the way back to the early days E days. I know it was a planned feature at one point, but never actually made it in. We would also like to implement this concept into our animal hunting mechanics, but we'll have more on that shortly. Keeping on the subject of tracking players, we tried to show off our weather system using ultra dynamic weather a few weeks back and something wasn't quite right. So here is a proper look at our snow and player deformation, which can also be used to track nearby players, but be quick, as the dynamic snow will fill in the tracks the players have left behind, and the more severe the weather, the quicker they will fill in. Since we last spoke, we have added one new location, a gas station located between the residential and mall areas. We want to tell a little story within each of our locations, so adding everyday locations we all visit in our everyday lives gives us the opportunity to tell a visual tale, whether it be sad, epic, or even funny. But all of these stories will be rooted in our lore. One new lore concept are the roots or vines growing all over. This will help differentiate us from other apocalyptic games with a hint of Lovecraftian horror. Mixed with our cloudy, foggy base weather, they really add a special element to any scene they live in. While these are an early concept and will change over time, we can say the closer you get to an alpha monster, the stronger the vines and other overgrowth presents will be. This mechanic will also help us funnel players towards the same location, combined with our laptop concept, which you would use to gain more information, be it lore based or coordinates to a potential alpha monster, it should work really well. You may have noticed the music in the background. Well, I am proud to announce that Bobson is working with us for our official soundtrack. This is an early draft for our main menu music, but he will be making a dynamic soundtrack. Day will sound different to sundown and night and so on. We are sending Bobson screenshots of locations with our vision of the atmosphere to help him create the feel we are going for. And we think he's done an amazing job so far with the main menu music. We cannot wait to hear more in the future, and we are all super proud to have him with us on this journey. Bubson has been working with music creation for about 26 years, composing, mixing, and mastering many projects, but mostly known in these parts for his work on the Daisy Namowsk official soundtrack. I'll leave you with a snippet of our main menu music playing, but please do let us know your thoughts in the comment section below.
And finally, for this devlog, with much deliberation between the team and the community feedback, we are revealing our biggest concept so far. We want to incorporate survival and extraction proper. Rabbit has been working away for the last week or so on a separate 2 km square map known at the moment as the Safe Zone. Our idea for this map is to upgrade your base of operations, craft, hunt, fish, cook, practice in the shooting range and time trial to hone your skills to prepare for the separate extraction mode. All of this you will be able to do solo or with up to four players, your squad, in a PvE co-op experience. We don't want to give too much away just yet, as we want you all to explore when the time comes. This map will be used to prepare and stockpile supplies you will be able to use in the extraction map. As an example, go off and hunt some deer in the 2km square map, cook a meal, and then take that with you to give you a buff, say for a slow heal or a 5 minute stamina boost. Of course, we would like to give you the option to quick play from the main menu and not waste any time getting into the PvP. But in the extraction zone, food is not as fresh as it is from your base and might not offer such benefits as a nice home cooked meal. Think of this as Vigor's safe house concept, but on steroids. We would also like to have NPC vendors on this map to buy and sell to in the future, giving players multiple choices on how to play. Do you quick play and stock up from the extraction zone? hunt or fish with friends in the safe zone, or get all of your supplies from the traders. The choice will be yours. Oh, and with this larger map, you will need a way to get about a bit quicker. I hope you enjoyed this updated look at Hunter's Uprising. We are still very early in the project at four months of work, but we really appreciate you all for sticking with us, and we will have much more to share in the near future. We have set up a Patreon for our game if you want to support us or buy us a coffee, this is by no means a necessity, but always very much appreciated. Let us know if you have any feedback in the comment section or in our game's Discord. All links will be in the description below. But most of all, thank you for watching, and I'll see you peeps next time.